Hey, what's up everybody? I am the Gerbil, and in today's video, I want to answer some of your questions that you've asked me over the last week in Discord, and I'm going to obviously renounce the results of my first weekly Discord vote, and I want to make a uh, kind of my bad correction that uh, regarding a recent video I posted, I gave some information that might have been wrong. I'll take the blame. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Oh, and by the way, I hope that this may become a weekly video where I take some of the feedback and questions that people give me either on YouTube but primarily through Discord in the Ask Gerbil channel and then I will share some of those online uh, and hopefully address whatever it is that's on your head rather than just the random thing I pull out of mine. So here we go. Let's get started, shall we? So um, Gerbil's Den round one vote results. Should I relic eight Nisa? The answer was yes. Yes, you should, Gerbil. Uh, it was a binding vote, as I said in my chat, 27 to 7. And so there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Relic 8 Nisa. Now, I already had Chirpa Relic 8 as well as Logray and Elder. So that left only Wicket out. And I thought, ah, what the heck, let's finish the squad without realizing that that qualified me to try Ewoks at the Lothal. Um combat mission that requires all Relic 8 light side characters. And so I threw it in there, did not remod, did nothing special, but uh, I I did it. I got through it. it. There was definitely an RNG factor in there. I ain't going to say that this is like a super easy battle, but got through the uh, Lothal combat mission, so earned a nice little 493,000 points, half a million for the guild, and I'm really happy that every time we get to Lothal, I have a full Relicate squad and you're probably thinking so what they're Ewoks, but you know what you can be the hero of your guild Because your guild is gonna need a relicate wicket anyway for operational deployments as well as two log rays and our R7 elders So you're not that far away and if you're gonna go for uh, Galactic Legend Leia then you need relic 7 Nisa and of course Chirpa rounds out the team and I think I think need uh, uh, Chirpa is already needed for Leia also um, at like relic Five, I don't recall. So if you go if you go for Gialea, and you want to contribute for your guild, then it just makes sense to do this anyway. Maybe I'm rationalizing. I don't know. But thank you for voting. Let's get to your questions, shall we? So first question here from Wolfpack 104. Any idea when, if I can expect the Zeta Crunch to slow down? And then there's some more commentary there. He says basically he's got feels like there's 15 Zetas he wants to apply or she. And um, I was worried that's going to take eight and a half months to get uh, because they're working on both CLS and Gen 9 Revan. We all have this problem. Uh, early game especially, we all have this problem. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, I think the answer depends on the age of your account, uh, how wide you're going. I mean, if you are laser focused, actually this isn't much of a problem. But if you are trying to, to spread out and diversify and build a wider roster, maybe for GAC or something, this is a problem. So I think it depends on your goals, of course. So I have some tips, not really solutions, but some tips. Um, find a pet project that you can passively farm and build up, like Jawas who require no Zetas. It's amazing. No Zetas for that whole squad of five. And they're all legacy characters, which means no Cairo tech. And then you just take them to gear 12. It's pretty easy to get there. Uh, maybe even gear 10, gear 11. And early game, they will stomp uh, Mon Mothma, early bugs, no Omicron, uh, and a bunch of other swarm attack teams. So. This is a way to grow your roster without applying Zetas. Similarly, 3v3 Tuscans, if you go with a lead, uh, you do need a, an Omicron there, but no Zetas. Ewoks, who I was just talking about, they're low Zeta. You definitely want one on Chirpa. The others are debatable. Uh, I think you need four, but really you get a squad of five with only one essential. Similarly, Territory War Omicron, uh, Phasma First Order. So it's a good little pet project. I think I did maybe. Otherwise, focus on one main line, like one pivotal team you want, like CLS. Um, and even within there, not all the Zetas are necessary. Arnold T101, if you don't know his channel, I mean, I don't know how you don't know his channel. He does like a, a, a Zeta guide every year, the most and worst 
Zetas, and like some of them that you would think you need, you don't really need. Like even in CLS, uh, Chupio has C3PO has I think three Zetas, and one of them says that he and uh, R2D2 both start with a stack of translation. That's good for him. It is. It's like 15% health up or something, but it's not gonna really hurt you if you don't have it in the long run, really. So you don't have to apply a Zeta just because it's there. Also, minimally farm teams that open Zeta opportunities, like indoor escalation with again those Ewoks, that'll get you an extra two to four Zetas a month. Night si uh, Night Sister, Defensive Dothamer gives you another two to four Zetas a month. I think there's another one of these, but I can't recall right offhand. And then there's a pack in the store. There's a, a picture here. There's a pack that pops up from time to time. It's 1,200 crystals, yeah, but you're guaranteed four Zetas, possibly 10, and then some uh, Omicrons. I used to buy this regularly because if, you're the, if your count gets like one Zeta maybe a day or one every other day, then you get you get four Zetas, and that's that's a week. That that literally shaves a week of, of farming off. You hit that 10 and there's like almost a month or half a month rather for a, an account that gets these slowly. Of course, late game, you're gonna get Zetas a lot more frequently and later game, it doesn't really matter so much. But the number one thing I can say what's why it's in all caps is fleet rank. Fleets, are so dominant in this game, not just for crystal farms, but also Zetas. The higher your rank is, the more fleet store credit you get every day. And when you hit number one, if you're hitting number one daily, you're basically getting a Zeta a day, almost. It's not quite, doesn't quite pay out that way, but you get a Zeta a day. Um, and so that's gonna that's gonna give you a minimum 30 Zetas a day, plus these other events. You, you should be bringing in realistically, I would say 40 to 45 Zetas a month. Uh, anyway, good luck. I hope that helps some. Um, let's move on. Next question comes to us from Wild Styles 2 k 3 How do I get a purple title? Great question, Wild Styles. Start your own Discord server and set your roll color to purple. If you don't want to go that route, screen grab this. I did it for you. You're welcome. Chronocast says, so how do I convince my guild to farm Inquisitors? And then there's some backstory here that, that Chronocast says that their guild doesn't require anything, but clearly um, wanting to push people in that direction. And I get it, makes sense. The problem is, of course, that Inquisitors have a very, very negative reputation for many reasons, most of which is 100% CG's fault. They are very Cairo heavy and hungry. They want them like every Inquisitor wants like three to 400 Kairos. That does suck. And until you unlock Grand Inquisitor, they are a ho-hum team. But there are some pros. There are some absolute pros, which is why people like Zareth and myself say that Inquisitors need to be a, a, a regular farm but Inquisitors are all accelerated, so I think at any level in the game, you do want to farm them. They are a solid territory war defense. Do not apply any Omicrons except for Grand Inquisitors. Do not apply any Omicrons except for Grand Inquisitors. Uh, of course, they are the only way to get Reva, who is the best character in the game outside of GLs, and she handedly beats a couple GLs. Also, they're needed for Fanatical Devotion. You got that Assault Battle. You can remind your guild that. You need them for Conquest, uh, Rise of the Empire, Territory Battle, etc., etc., etc. CG is in love with this faction, and it's possible we will get more Inquisitor things in the game as we go ahead. Beyond that, uh, you can also point out that Ninth Sister is absolutely plug and play all in almost any dark side, especially Empire team. And then 5th, 7th, and 9th round up an amazing early game team with Palpat uh, Emperor Palpatine lead and Vader. So maybe there's some food for thought. Hopefully that helps you. All right, next we got Super Mard. Super Mard says they just got Relic 7 Nisa. Rock on. I love that. Looking for some advice on modding. <laughs> I laugh because Nisa is really, really hard to figure out the modding. I have I have actually been playing, I'd say, 12 to 15 Ewok battles a day for the last week in Arena, Territory Wars, GAC, uh, and um, I'm not sure how to mod her yet. So it's complicated. Here's the thing. If you read the kit, you think you want some some critical chance, but if, if you miss this line in Territory War Omicron, which is what you said, Territory Wars, she gets 95% critical chance, 
period. And she has a base rate of like 80. So that means she has, by default, in Territory Wars, 175% critical chance with no mods. So do not mod anything critical chance. She does not need it for Territory Wars. She's also going to gain some health. She's going to gain 10 speed for each ally, Ewok ally. So that means plus 50 speed off the get and starts with 100% turn meter. So speed is not really essential. Now, the next thing is like, who are you going to pair her with? If you're going in there with Ewok Elder and Lagre and Chief Chirpa, obviously for the lead. Actually, there's some Tebow synergy reasons to consider, but don't, just don't. Um, they all have direct callouts to health, health benefits, and Nisa also helps everyone recover health. Every single enemy turn, they all recover 5% health. So there's a lot of health things in there. For that reason, uh, and for the way that she applies damage over time with every assist and everybody's going to be assisting and then I actually recommend health for survivability Time out your opponents if you put her on defense. It's super annoying This team is one of the thickest in the game right now And I think people are going to start to realize that when they come across the nut jobs like me who have relic them all and Modded them well now below me is a picture of how I've modded mine. I presently I am still changing that don't stick to that but yeah, I think I think for the arrow and triangle, it's it's really debatable if you want offense, health, or speed on both of those. For the cross, I definitely think you want potency because you need that potency to apply the damage over times. Offense is a good alternative, but she hits like a wet noodle, but she hits perpetually, like a million times. It's disgusting how slow the animation is too. Secondaries, I without a doubt, I would go in that order: speed, potency, health. So good luck. Hope it helps. Next, we got Mara Jade. Yes, the one, the only Mara Jade who loves the 100% or 100 emoji. I don't know, but ask the question. Do we have a channel to discuss mods? Uh, I'll make one soon. That was an easy one. Thank you very much. Next up, we got Gearhead24501. I wonder where the 501 came from. Sounds familiar. Anyway, so they, uh, 501 says, I'm thinking about going for Profundity next. They only have four functioning fleets, uh, but it was worried that if they go for Profundity, they're just going to be scrapping their home one fleet and they're not actually gaining a fleet. First and foremost, I'm going to say Profundity is, in my opinion right now, still the best fleet in the game. Hands down, bar none, it beats everything, including Leviathan. It is so easy, so easy. I've never, I have actually never lost a Leviathan with, with uh, Profundity. Um, there's a trick to it, but it's super duper easy. May get nerfed also, who knows, or buffed on the other side. So should you still do it? Yes, absolutely. You should still go for it. And are you going to be mothballing home one? Well, that depends on your investment in home one. Um, if you do a quick YouTube search for my videos regarding Raven's Claw uh, and Radis, Admiral Radis Profundity videos, you'll see that you absolutely do not need reinforcements with the Profundity ship. First off, it's only going to need its starting three wide reading outrider in the Falcon. All the other ships can stay with home one. And in, in, in earnest, Raven's Claw is, I believe, a better starting ship with the home one than is the Falcon. When Cassian comes in, it's going to strip away all the enemy buffs. And very likely, you're going to be able to knock down all the attackers and take apart the fleet. I did a recent video on it, just Raven's Claw versus everything except for the GL fleets, right? So Finalize, Eratus, Malevolence, Negotiator. And I've done a few other fleets before that. And it is a consistent to me high banner win against most of those fleets, Negotiator being the hardest. But absolutely, uh, it tears apart Malevolence, Finalizer, and Radis, and you will still come across those on G at GAC. So if you invest the, the gear level into your pilots, um, and that's going to depend on your level of GAC, where your opponents are, um, and you learn some strategy because uh, Raven's Claw definitely has some, some strategy involved in it. It does not just pew 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 button smash if so you will lose. Automatic you will lose. You have to manage it. But you learn those strategies and you are not going to be mothballing your home one. So hope that helps. Uh, links down below for a couple of those videos I recommend you check out. Uh, next up, back to Mara Jade saying, hey, these mod loadouts, are they all right for my Phoenix Captain Rex? Well, if you watched my last video, I kind of screwed up um, my uh, Rex. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. I have an apology about that one. But I looked a little bit closer at these and a few things did stand out. First off, protection primaries on Phoenix is a no-go, no-go, no-go. Uh, Rex in uh, JC is going to give his team 100% um, 
health. In Territory Wars, Hera is going to give your team a bonus 50% health. Then um, Chopper is going to help you recover. I think that's 15% health at the start of every turn. And then every time you get a debuff, Kanan is going to give is going to allow each of your members to recover 25% health. Um, there's just so much health stuff happening. Do not put protection on there. And in fact, some of them, I think like Chopper has a higher base health anyway than protection. So even though the, a, a six dot mod gives you 16% health versus 24 protection, do the math, you should still wind up with a lot more health than protection. Uh, and then you got the recovery there too, right? Um, Kanan, same, all health, defense and tenacity mod sets. I don't think you want speed on him. Just give him high speed secondaries. Uh, um, he has a way to gain, gain turn meter, as does Chopper removing enemy turn meter, as does Rex giving your whole team turn meter, so he will naturally speed up with that. Ezra is asking for more CC uh, secondaries, aim for 90% critical chance rate, and Hera, she's going to want some tenacity. Yeah, you, you just you don't want her stunned because she is going to be passing turn meter, reducing ally cooldowns, and of course applying backup plan, especially in territory wars that goes across the whole team. The entire team gets backup plan. But if she gets stunned, no backup plan, right? Plan B falls apart. So make sure you got some tenacity on her. And that goes for everybody. All right, next we got Scove. I hope I'm saying that right. Scove says, rather than going for CLS, uh, if you make your third attack team, this is this is referring to my crazy wacky build strategy where I said go for Mon Mothma, uh, Admiral Radis, and Bosk in the start. That gives you your defensive teams for GAC, and that leads you into an epic home one fleet. Yes, I know some of you still cringe at that. That will guarantee you, if you play it right, number one in uh, fleet arena to get that 400 daily crystals, and then slowly transition that into executor from your bounty hunter farm and uh, profundity from your Admiral Radis Rogue One, Mon Mothma team, which will also naturally lead you into Han's uh, Millennium Falcon, which means you're going to get um, the CLS team too. Um, and that CLS becomes your primary offensive team. I also went for Inquisitors alongside for another offensive team. I digress though. So rather than going for CLS, if you're going to rush Profundity, what about going Dash to lead Han, Chewie, and then rounding it out with Vandor, Chewie, and uh, another light side scoundrel because the AI doesn't handle Vandor, Chewie very well. I agree that's okay. Um, the pros of this clearly is that you're not going to farm Ewoks to go for that profundity. You don't need CLS um, or I'm at C3PO is what I should have put there. You'll get a profundity faster. That's true because you're not, you know, going for the full CLS squad. It was this will get you a higher smugglers run event rewards quicker with a dash lead, which is true. And you're right. I think that the AI does not handle that well. Big cons though, less long term viability overall um, because. Like CLS is just amazing on offense and defense. C3PO is plug and play early game in a lot of different teams, be it Ewoks, Galactic Republic, Jedi, not Jedi, uh, or Rebels, sorry. Uh, you will be missing out on the military might assault battle higher tiers. Like this is one of the easiest assault battles to win. You can literally spam challenge tier three in, in four minutes without any strategy. Uh, with relatively low relics. Like I have literally been told many, many times from people that did this, watch my video and they're like, oh my gosh, Gerbil, you're right, I did it with like relic one, gear 12, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, it's possible. You need some RNG at that low level. But this, this assault battle is so easy to get at low levels, but you need a CLS team to get through it. Um, otherwise, the dash team here is going to be less effective overall in GAC just because it is going to counter fewer teams than CLS would for sure, which means you're going to lose out on those GAC wins. So while you will get profundity faster, um, I actually, the more time I've had to think about this, I'm not sure I would go that route because Vandor Chewie is good, but later just not really going to have the same utility dash is also really really good but again later tends to lose out on some utility uh, and cls does not i mean it's just cls is awesome all right next we got sup one who says every bounty hunter ship is on a hard node maybe you can fast farm them but it takes so many crystals how do you get there? How did I get there with my alt account so early? And the answer is this pack right here. Everybody forgets about this pack. This is probably one of the best packs in the game. 
um, for 1,895 crystals, 1,900 crystals, you are almost guaranteed, almost, almost, it's a statistical average, but you will average in the long run 80 ship shards, and that includes a high possibility, one in four drop rate of Bosk. Bosk, IG, Xanadu, and Slave One. So do some math. Um, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm 100% sure this math is right. The statistical average per roll is 21.8 shards per roll. You get four rolls out of this. So every time you buy this for 1900 crystals, you're gonna get 80 shards of a ship on average. Now, yes, you may get a ship you already have, that's okay, convert it into shard shop and move on, forget about it, that's just what happens. But even when there were only two ships I needed, uh, Bosk and I don't remember the other one, I still bought this pack because if you look at the high, the the, the mean here, the, uh, or not the mean, but the mode, the mode is 52% likelihood that you're gonna get 15 shards. The second most probable outcome is a 28%, actually 29% that you're gonna have 25 shards. Now think about in the store, these, Houndstooth is 100 shards per crystal, I think, or per 100 crystals per shard, maybe 80, I don't remember. And if you are farming it, so you, you, you drop, 50 crystals for the energy, you roll it, you're gonna get one, maybe two if you're lucky, so it's still 25 crystals, this beats it. And then you refresh it, then you buy more energy, then you refresh it. Very quickly, you're paying 60, 70 crystals per shard, whereas this, 23. So even if you miss the one you want, you would have to miss it two or three purchases in a row before you actually are paying uh, more in crystal value. So yeah, it's a gamble, but if you're still early game and you need all four of these ships, save your crystals. Pack away 100, 100 crystal, 150 crystals a day if you can, and uh, every 15 or so days, every two weeks, buy one of these packs and you will get all, all of the bounty hunter ships at seven stars really, really fast. Anyway, last question. So I want to talk quickly about an error, an oopsie I had. So I did not know that inflict tenacity down, that tenacity down is unresistable, if that's a word. It cannot be resisted. That actually, that changes my modding recommendations. Like I thought that it could be resisted and if it got resisted, everything else could be resisted. Turns out, even though like Count Dooku's kit says inflict uh, tenacity down and health no buff immunity, which cannot be resisted. There's no comma, I mean, there's a comma, but I don't think there's anything in there that, anyway, I digress. It can be resisted, which means it cannot be resisted, which means you do not need as much potency. So if it can't be resisted, then you're gonna hit tenacity down. The other debuffs are guaranteed, which means potency is not as important. However, the enemies, of course, could cleanse themselves, and then you gotta wait for the cooldown on this to reset, and his middle abil ability does have a stun, so I think some potency is still warranted, but three sets is overkill. So I think my, my modding recommendation was uh, incorrect. So I'm still experimenting now, I'm reevaluating, and thank you to everybody who reached out to tell me that, uh, that I boo-booed here, so thank you, I appreciate it. But my active thinking right now is I'm gonna run two health sets for the reasons I said before on health. Still gonna keep a potency set just in case the, the enemy debuffs get uh, cleansed, but otherwise I'm gonna focus on speed, tenacity, and health. There is, I'm still gonna leave a crit chance on the triangle because in his middle one, um, there's a call out to critical chance there that's important, and of course, crit chance is always good to have. Um, so, there you go. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this segment, this video. If you did, let me know. If you want to ask a question, jump into my Discord. There's a link to it down below in the description. Uh, post a you know, direct message to me in the Ask Durable section, and I will consider adding it next week. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.